Explore the ancient past with us and enter the magical world of the Minoans in Heraclean Crete. We're in Heraclean, home to the Minoan palace of Knossos built around 1700 BC and an ancient Venetian fortress. Today Heraclean is Crete's largest city with a huge port, an excellent archaeological museum and some cool restaurants, bars and shops. So it's wandering around time, we're just looking around the city at the moment. Port of Heraclio. from the other side. Little is known of the advanced Minoan civilization which flourished on Crete from about 3000 to 1100 BCE. We don't know what these people called themselves or what their language sounded like. They left behind a written language but that has never been deciphered, known to scholars as Linear A. Sir Arthur Evans, who excavated Knossos, the Knossos site in the 19th century, called the Minoans because he believed the site was constructed by legendary King Minos, who turned everything he touched into gold. That claim has since been disputed. They built huge maze-like palaces, the ruins of which can be seen all over Crete, crafted exquisite gold jewellery, were expert potters and painted vibrant frescoes on the palace walls. Much of their artwork can still be seen today in the museum in Heraclion. It seems that they worshipped goddesses based on nature, including a snake goddess. Their artwork is full of natural images like animals and plants. The Minoans also traded far and wide, trading with Egypt, Cyprus and Asia. Years before the Romans thought to do anything like this, they developed a sophisticated plumbing system. At Knossos, they built underground clay pipes for sanitation and water supply and a hypercourse system for underfloor heating. The earliest flushing toilet in history was found at Knossos site. Word about the site's excavator, Sir Arthur Evans, who unearthed the site in 1897 and spent the next 20 or so years doing restoration work. Much of this work has been criticised. For example, the Minoans built their palaces with gypsum, a beautiful material that reflects the light. Sir Arthur Evans did the reconstruction work by covering over the gypsum with cement, thus removing the light reflection and risking further damage to the site. Cement is now being removed with laser treatment. Sir Arthur Evans also painted the frescoes with colours that were not entirely accurate and imagined uses for rooms based on very little evidence. For example, seeing a room with dolphin frescoes, he imagined it as the Queen's chambers and got illustrations commissioned of what it would have looked like. Here we are at the Palace of Knossos. We are just about to start our exploration of this great and famous ruin.
Sir Arthur Evans believed the area before us was a theatre. The seat you can see on the left-hand side. It's unlikely, though, because it's intersected by the Royal Road, which leads from the palace to the Minoan town. These pits were used for storing grain. Restorations by Arthur Evans. Obviously not appreciated by everybody. I think it looks rather nice. Sir Arthur Evans painted this room in 1884 or thereabouts, believing that it was used for purification. Steps leading down to where purification would have taken place. Arthur Evans was obviously a lover of the distressed look restoration. The frescoes that we're going to show you at the Knossos site are reproductions. The originals have been moved to the museum in Heraklion for safekeeping. containers used for grain. The Minotaur, maybe. The Palace of Knossos is associated with several legends, the most popular being the one of the Minotaur. The Greeks developed this legend from the Minoan practice of building their palaces, including Knossos, in a maze-like structure with a lot of small rooms and corridors, and because of the bull worship that the Minoans used. This is thought to be the Queen's room. This area was used for worship, they think, and then later for storage. Of the palace where everything went on. The depictions of monkeys on the frescoes here are interesting because monkeys aren't native to Crete. So it's, uh, it's believed that as the Minoans were seafaring people, they picked up the monkeys on their trips to the Asia Minor region and brought them home as pets. The three ladies depicted in this fresco are thought to be of royal lineage since they have a lot of jewellery and their hair is very dark and curly and obviously dressed. Um, it's thought that their hands that they're holding up would have had a lot of rings on them and that they would have been showing off their jewellery. Bull leaping 
was thought to be a very popular sport among the Minoans. And this fresco depicts a person basically leaping over the horns of the bull onto his back and then somersaulting off to the back of him. <laughs>